Today we're going to talk about choosing the right detail uh, because the important thing about detail is how you start the painting. If we can simplify things in terms of shape and value after finding out what our focal point is, then it's easier to decide where the place, the detail, and how to simplify the areas around the center of interest. Today we are talking about choosing the right details to paint in our painting. And it's similar to the previous lessons we've talked about or previous subject we've talked about as far as simplifying your painting. And you want to simplify the big shapes, simplify the value, keep the color simple. And all that falls in line, then the detail becomes a lot easier too. But if we're seeing detail first, if we do too much drawing, too many small darks and lights in our drawing stage, then our values become small and detail takes over everywhere. So make the goal in your painting to suggest the light, not the detail. Then detail becomes easier. And most of our references are full of detail. It's hard sometimes to pick what's important and what's not. So I'm gonna go through a few photographs and talk about uh, some things to look for. First of all, a few things we wanna think about. We wanna find the focal point. Again, that's what we're saying in almost everything we talk about in painting. Find a focal point as far as the composition goes. Crop it. Cropping gets rid of a lot of unnecessary detail. And then remember, detail is just small dark and light value changes, which here in this photograph, it's all over in these trees, dappled lighting, gravel, dappled lighting on the road here. It's everywhere. So we really need to think about what we need to do to get rid of it and or decide where we want it. And then last of all, less is more. Less detail makes for a better painting. But detail is important. The question is how much. And sometimes that's a matter of taste, personal preferences. Some people are very detail oriented and they have to struggle with eliminating. I tend to be more big shape focused so I struggle with where to put the detail and exactly how to render it sometimes. In this reference we're looking into a big stand of trees here. So what we want to do is simplify it first and if I pull the big shapes together, lose all the detail, and you can see I really got rid of all the detail in this area and this area, and I put it in this area. That's my focal point. Now it is kind of the center of interest is way over to the right. I could move this tree over this way about right here and just squeeze some of these, maybe even cut off some of this, but definitely move that tree over a little bit. But I do kind of like it's a different looking landscape having the focal point way over here. I wouldn't want to do that very often, but here the lines of the shadows and the sunlit areas really pull the eye this way. All these things really point to the focal point, so I don't mind it. If all the lines were going this way or a variety of different directions, this wouldn't work as well. But there's a lot of variation or a lot of line direction that points you towards the tree. So I don't mind the tree being way over to the right. But I made the decision that my detail is gonna be on the tree, that's my focal point. So I really eliminated, of course this is computerized, so it's just big flat digital looking strokes, but I really eliminated everything over here and here, detail wise, and focused all right here and a little bit down in here. And then some on the trees over in here, but. As I move this way, I gradually drop the detail. And that's what I want to do. I want to eliminate detail everywhere and then come in and apply it to the focal point. So simplifying all these trees right here, then just redirecting the detail on the sycamore on the right. But it helps to see it this way first because you can always add more detail. The more you paint, the tighter it gets. So you can always mess it up with more detail at some point. So the next image here, I took this, this is in uh, Missouri, previous one was in Kansas. And like a lot of times I like two different things. I really like this distance back in here and then of course I like the barns here. So one of the things you really want to consider when how much detail to get rid of is to crop. Spend a lot of time either with the sketchbook or with the computer. Or if you do the computer, I do the sketchbook also, but at least the sketchbook. And here the details are a lot more confined. I've gotten rid of probably more than half the photograph. Then I wanted to decide where my detail is gonna be. And it could be in this area, it could be over here. I would probably eliminate the cows. Or if I put them in, I'd put them in back in here. Because what I'm interested in is the bar, not the cows. The cows are a nice element but if I put them right up front like this, the cows become the focal point. 
So you want to redirect the viewer's eye and get rid of stuff that kind of gets in the way. And here I think the cows get in the way. And then little things. Some of the junk here in front, I kind of like this thing. It has lines and shapes in it that works well. I have no idea what this is. So I would get rid of that. So if I can't tell what it is or it doesn't make a shape that helps the composition, I get rid of it. But I kind of like the junk in here. I can kind of suggest that. And it just looks like farm junk. But that is a bit too big and straight. It kind of gets in the way. So eliminating stuff really helps. Just because it, it, it's in the photograph doesn't mean you have to put it there. This limb also. As nice as fallen limbs are in paintings, it doesn't help the composition at all. So I'd uh, probably redirect this fence here to go back maybe that way. And that pulls the viewer's eye into it. Key though here I think is when I first crop it, I get rid of more than half the painting. And I know I can always come back and, and recompose, so I usually take bigger views when I photograph anyway. Now this is one, it's it's very busy, but it's, it's easily simplified. And again, the first thing I want to do is crop. My focal point, of course, is right in here, this tree. Probably more this area than anything else of the tree. So I want that maybe a little bit to the right of center. I don't want it center. I don't want it left. If I move the tree too far to the left in the composition, I get too much of the greens on the right side. And that's just too busy, too thick, jumbled up mess. There's no depth looking through there. So I like the left side. So I'll have a little bit more of that. And I do like the foreground. So and this tree is tall, so it's going to be more of a square or a vertical composition. But I just want to make sure the tree is right of center so it reads better. And that works pretty good. It's off center a little bit. I do have a lot of stuff I need to get rid of. I need to simplify back in here. That's nice. I kind of like the dark and light, but it's really going to take away from my focal point. So I have to really get rid of it. So I'm going to do that. If I simplify background hills, background flat plane and as I come forward color will get stronger and warmer or the dirt does here the dirt's a lot cooler still somewhat sunlit sunlit it's kind of that gray midday flat look but all my detail is in the tree here a little bit in this greenery but not much and I would have a little bit down here but 85 90 percent of it's this tree and even though I'm adding more detail to the tree, I'm really simplifying it compared to the photograph. Photograph, way too busy, even though that's where I'm going to have my detail. I will start with probably four values, two darks and two lights, and work those values in there. And that's going to give the tree shape and form. Then as I move out, I can add some detail, but keep it pretty, pretty limited. The background here, all this area is pretty much just a foil to make the tree stick out. I've got no detail in there hardly at all. And that makes the tree really stand out. The more little darks and lights I get back in here, the less important the tree becomes. Create more interest by doing less. Now the next one here, this is also Grand Canyon. And it's easy to really like this stuff back in here. A lot of stuff going on in the crevices and cracks and but my focal point, you know, I can have it right in here. I can have it here. I don't want this tree to be the focal point, but it might be kind of secondary. But again, that's that thing of force yourself to eliminate and pick one area that's the most important. But the detail can be in this tree, the smaller darks and lights of the rock. And as I move away from there, I want to eliminate the detail. So my changes here didn't do a lot, but I did pull the background together. And the fact that I've got my darkest darks here, here, and here really pulls that foreground forward. You see the big jump in value between the rock here and the background. And that's what gives me depth in there, getting that value change between background and foreground. The more I push it, the better. So I tend to round darks just so I create more contrast. And again, do more small darks and lights in the rocks. I didn't do too much on the computer, but that's where I would probably right in there would kind of focus all the detail. And then as I move out, I would I would simplify. And I would also crop. I could crop quite a bit here because I want that cliff and those shrubbery to be bigger. And again, I'm thinking shape-wise, I think that's a pretty good shape 
My horizon line is above center. My horizon line is somewhere in there. So I'm above center, less sky, more foreground. Focus, my detail will be right in this area somewhere. But this would also make a good uh, vertical. Again, just the idea of it really changes your whole painting when you change the shape. If I get this much sky, well, I still have more foreground than sky. I can't have both. I can't have the same amount of rock and the same amount of sky. It just that centers everything too much. So here I've got more foreground, less sky. I could have more sky, less foreground, but that would really be zooming in pretty tight. But this zooms in and it creates a real nice composition. I still have my focal point here. My background still very kept very simple, and it makes this area s stick out a bit more. Now, looking at a couple of paintings, this is a painting by Edward Compton. He was a 19th century American painter, and painted mostly in Europe, or a lot in Europe. He's not real well known, but his paintings are very nice. And what I like about him, especially for our purposes here, is that you can see he really focuses the detail in one area. The snow has a couple of different values and the rocks have a couple of different values, but all the shapes are real big on the mountains. Same thing in here. It looks detailed, but it's more of color change than value change. Detail is when we change the value. You can see on the trees here, these little darkened lights, that's detail. Whereas using the negative painting of the background mountain, to cut into the tree, show the branches. That's all negative painting. And he has little value changes, little darks and lights, and that creates a sense of detail. And that's what he's done to the trees, but he's eliminated it everywhere else. It has a sense of detail because of the broken color. This mountain over here has several colors in it, but only two values. So if you cut down on the values everywhere else and make color change, same thing in the foreground. There is detail in the foreground. You can see the little dark, uh, small darks and lights. But there's also a lot of color change, which gives you more the sense of detail without adding more. So if we turn this to a black and white, you can see the background is painted very simple. One value there, one value there, two or three values in here. Very simple, and then all the little value changes are in the trees. The foreground simplifies a bit more. But it's more about color change. That's the same value, different color in an area, a big shape that makes it work. This is another Edward Compton, and I believe it's a gouache. It's not, it's a, which is an opaque watercolor. Similar to oils, except it's not. It's a watercolor, but it has white in it, so it's a lot of opaqueness in here, similar to oil. But you can see the simplicity of everything. I mean, actually, the most of the detail is probably in this area. But there's a lot of detail back here, too. Not as much as up here, so it stays back in the background. But everything else is kept so simple. Very little value change, which is what the detail is. And it really directs your eye around. Starts here, or comes in this way, and leads right up to these real bright lights and darks. So, uh, very well composed and simplified, getting rid of all this detail that you would see in here. There's some detail in here, obviously, but not nearly as much as here or back in here. So if we look at it black and white, well, it's not much change, because it's all, the, the values are the most important here. The color he uses is temperature. He's got blues back in here, and he's got kind of red oranges in here, and then kind of grayish in the middle. So not much color to show the difference, but it does get rid of some of the broken color. Same value, different color in some of that area that uh, looks like detail in the color end, but when you do black and white, it disappears because it's the same value. So as you, as you do these, the same things apply to the detail. You want to simplify the shape, crop the unnecessary stuff, and then just decide how much detail you can get rid of. Find your focal point. Detail that, and as you move out, use bigger brushes and simpler shapes, big shapes. Now here's my thumbnail, and all I'm trying to do here, this isn't, again, it's not drawing for drawing's sake, I've got a shadow pattern, a dark pattern, and the dark pattern consists of the shadows, as well as just darker masses like the trees. There's lights hitting these areas, but overall it's a lot darker than the tree, a lot darker than the sky, darker than the light flat plains, and darker than the light shrubbery. So 
Even though it's in the light, it's dark enough that I keep it part of the dark pattern. And it helps set up the composition. And my tree's a bit centered most of the time, and this is my second one. I usually do two or three to kind of get it set up right because I don't like to erase. But my tree's a bit centered, I'm going to move it over just a bit more. And most time I would go ahead and just do another one down here. Do as many thumbnails as it takes, but instead of doing another one, I'm just going to move it over as I get the drawing going. But this is what I'm going to draw, this pattern. If I can get this pattern in here abstractly on my canvas, painting is going to work. If I look at the photograph and I see the detail first, it's going to fall apart. It's going to become really difficult to get it drawn. If I'm looking at contour, the outside edge of everything, because there's too many little shapes in the photograph, too many details. So if I can simplify it to dark and light pattern, it's going to be easier. So this is real important. And since we're focusing on detail, the important thing about detail is to get rid of it all first, then decide where you want it. That way, your focus in the beginning is the light and the shapes, not detail.